Tom Stoddart is one of the world's most respected photojournalists. His photographs of conflict and unrest, famine and pivotal historical moments such as the fall of the Berlin Wall, the election of President Mandela and the siege of Sarajevo undeniably shaped and still form public opinion. His book, Eyewitness, is one of the most celebrated and very honest accounts of humanity's struggle with amity, a legacy volume rich with at times shockingly raw and frank pictures of combat, but also thoughtful in terms of creative composition whilst disorder and anarchy share his space. He still chooses to travel extensively and is an acclaimed Getty contributor, yet the shores of Beadnell, a small fishing village in Northumberland, is where photography first made an impression upon Tom during his youth. Three or four, I started school in, in, in the local primary school. My grandmother owned the local shop there, so I brought up with her. I spent, you know, all my time, I did spend a lot of time on this beach. I, I used to go out with the fishermen um, to the, you know, salmon fishing and all of that. Bidnell um, was visited by a team uh, from the Daily Mirror in Manchester and uh, they were making a story about the decline of the fishing industry. Uh, so they got all the fishermen together, there was about a dozen, and they got uh, some of their sons um, in the group as well. And the idea was to show that the next generation wasn't going to come through and, and carry on the traditions. Um, the Mirror ran uh, the story as a double page spread and I remember you know, everyone was very excited in the community to, to see a national paper come, come here. But what struck me was when the photographer uh, sent complimentary prints to the people in the picture. And he, he didn't just send the small kind of snaps that I was used to seeing. It was, there were big 16 by 12, beautiful double weight bromide prints. And uh, it made a big impress, uh, impression on me. Five years later, when I was looking for a uh, a career, I uh, saw an advert in the local paper for literally a trainee photographer and um, I thought that would be an amazing way to, you know, to make a living and, and so I applied and got the job. I think every child has very strong memories of where they were brought up and uh, of course since then I've been, I've, as a photographer, photojournalist, I've travelled to over 60 different countries and um, but it is true that there's no place like home, so I, I do feel very uh, great attachment to it. I remember I was lucky to get this uh, job as a trainee photographer on the Berwick Advertiser. And um, even at that time, I thought uh, maybe, maybe I, I could be a reporter because I, was, I, was, I had been quite good at English at school, but I very quickly noticed that reporters, even in those days, stayed in the office and photographers had to be where the action was. Uh, this picture um, has been quite controversial actually. Um, it's from South Sudan and I was covering a famine there. And I was working with uh, Médecins Sans Frontières in, at one of their feeding stations uh, when this, this little boy came crawling along the ground and he was carrying, pulling uh, his bag of maize. And, um, so I was already shooting the scene and then suddenly there was, in the viewfinder I saw this kind of white flash and this man uh, came and stole the food from, from the boy uh, and just turned and, and walked off. From, from the very first day I knew that I would never do anything else, that this was what I, I would do for the rest of my life. I think uh, you have to remember as a, as a photographer when you're faced with uh, people in in dire straits and in, you know, in, in conflict and in uh, terrible situations that you can leave, you know? You have the choice to leave, they don't. I don't like the term uh, that is used quite, quite freely now, war photographer. Um, there are very, very few people who only cover war and, um, you know, they, they're few and far between. I mean, we, we cover conflicts, but we also cover politics. Um, we cover joyful events, we cover whatever's going on in the international uh, stage. It's not just um, death and destruction, and, uh, but it seems that uh, conflict photography gets a 
people like to glamorise it, and that's a shame, really. So sadly, in my uh, career, I've photographed um, quite a few famines, and it's always terribly disturbing and awful to see children uh, starving to death. And um, you know, it shouldn't be happening in this day and age. Um, I can always tell a good news photographer. They've got normally got dirty knees. I like to uh, see pictures where the photographer has actually got down and uh, instead of shooting down. And this is um, really an incredible scene in, in, even in my long career. I haven't really witnessed life and death in one frame um, very often. And what's happening here is the, the lady on the left is uh, having a baby. Her sisters are delivering the baby. And then on the right-hand side of the frame, we have a man who's been brought in to the hut um, who's dying uh, through lack of food. And uh, I remember when I shot this, uh, I only shot three frames because there was so much light. It was so dark in the, in the hut and there was so much light pouring through that I, I just didn't think the, uh, the lens would handle it, but um, it, it's made quite a, quite a strong image. The photograph was part of a, a set of pictures that was on display at the World Press exhibition in um, I think it was Johannesburg and a child was looking at the at the image and and said to his teacher there's something strange about this photograph and when she asked him what it was he said uh, someone's wearing boots and um, it was only afterwards that when someone told me the story that I realized these were my uh, boot prints trying to find the right angle to um, to shoot the scene um, and yet, you know, I hadn't noticed them and my picture editors hadn't noticed them and the magazine editors hadn't noticed them. And it took a child to um, pinpoint something that was um, kind of out of sync in, the, in this whole scene. I think ideas are, uh, are the currency of how we, how we exist as professional photographers because, I mean, that and the, the insatiable quest for news and needing to know what's going on anywhere in the world at, at any given time is um, is crucial really to being a photojournalist. I've got a long legacy but that's because uh, I've been around an awful long time and um, it you know it has gone in the blink of an eye um, so you, you always have to remind yourself that this is a, a, a it's an amazing way to earn your living and, and uh, you're literally the jack of all trades and, and you see a lot of things but you're there for a short, a short time so you can't possibly become an expert on everything. Um, but you have to remain interested and, and you have to be interested in people and um, what makes the world tick. And it, if, you're, if you're interested in news and current affairs, it's, it's an amazing uh, job. Is it addictive? Very much addictive. Could you, could you uh, see yourself doing anything else at all? Oh, I'd never uh, do anything else. I mean, again, I, on my first job uh, as this kid on a paper, the one of the old photographers said, you'll have a, a champagne lifestyle on a beer salary. And that, that's exactly what it's been. Uh, for many years, I, I carried a, an old Raleigh Flex in my bag. Um, I just love um, the softness of, uh, of the lens from the, the old uh, two and a quarter square camera um, and the way it falls off and I used to, uh, whenever there was a scene that I thought uh, I needed something a bit different I would uh, try and get, get the moment and I, I really like this picture because I mean these siblings have got nothing, they've got no food, uh, they've got no clothes, they've, all they've got is their, uh, the bowl that they were getting aid from, from uh, Madison Sans Frontier. But there's a you know a lovely magic moment between them, and uh, the the Rolly has um, really captured it uh, beautifully. It, it, it's a, a lovely print when it's printed big. The way I look at it is, you know, I try hard to go on everything that is major uh, in the world, and and if I only get one frame, that's worthwhile. I think when you start, it's uh, it, you know it's incredibly exciting. You're um, I remember going to Beirut in 1982, and I first met Don McCullen there in Beirut, and it was a, it was the biggest story in the world, and the uh, Israeli forces were bombing Yasser Arafat's uh, PLO, and you know you really felt this was what being a real photographer was, um, that you were on a, a major international story, and there were very few photographers, and it was dangerous, so it was 
incredibly exciting and you felt, you know, that your work was worthwhile. I, I've always felt um, that I have the right to be there as a photojournalist in, in lots of situations. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a policeman, I'm not a soldier, I'm a photographer. And, um, and when I go into areas like that, I do my job. Um, of course, if, if you have the chance to, if you have to get involved, then you do. You're a human being first and a, and a photographer second. But by and large, uh, your role is to, to go into these areas where other people can't. They, they don't have the, uh, the privilege of, of, of going to see these things firsthand. So it's your job to bring back images that are truthful and are educational and that uh, inform and inform debate and maybe get things changed. That's all you can hope for. Uh, this is Sarajevo, the siege of Sarajevo. Um, I covered the, the siege for pretty much four years and sniping was a big thing. Um, people were uh, terrified of snipers and, and consequently they ran everywhere. So um, this is Sniper Alley that um, became famous throughout the world where people just literally took their lives in their hand and sprinted across the the open uh, ground. Um, I mean, imagine the psychology of commuting to work um, in, in Sarajevo at that time. Uh, people were terrified and, and waited sometimes an hour before they plucked up the courage to run across the open uh, ground. Still pictures are incredibly powerful, still incredibly powerful things. If you think of the pictures from Abu Ghraib uh, torture uh, uh, prison, you know, what other stills would, uh, what other kind of medium would get Don Donald Rumsfeld to go on television and admit that the United States were doing this and apologize for it? If the stills didn't exist, um, you know, it, it, there's no way he would have done that. But they do exist and they were taken by people on the inside, by their very own people who are administrating these beatings. Um, and that's what's changed. This image is from the uh, earthquake in India, where 30,000 people died within two minutes. And I, I was working uh, there and came across this elderly lady just sitting in the, in the shade by her devastated house. Uh, it's just a very simple picture. Um, photography doesn't have to be complex. Uh, it's just the, the cracks on the wall mirror the cracks on her, on her face and uh, it, it makes a beautiful print when it's, uh, when it's printed properly. I don't think uh, you're aware at the time. Um, I, I'm a great kind of believer that, uh, and I, I tell young photographers this all the time, that they're not shooting for the next day or the next week or the next month. They're shooting for the next 20 years, 25 years, especially if they're on, a, on a, an important event. Um, as I say, I've been around, this is my 46th year as a professional, and it's amazing how many times photographs I shot 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I mean, the Berlin Wall is, is a point in case. Um, I happened to be, by, by chance, by luck, on, on the Berlin Wall the night it opened. I was at Checkpoint Charlie when the very first people came through. Um, and it seems like yesterday, and in fact it's, you know, it was November the 9th, 1989, and uh, the pictures I shot that night are still being used. This uh, photograph has been used many times as well and I, it's one that I, I, I'm very proud of, about because it kind of uh, shows my style and how I like to work which is essentially getting in uh, close, capturing a moment and then getting out before uh, I become part of the story in a way. Uh, the lady is uh, putting her child on a bus out of Sarajevo uh, to escape the war. Uh, she's trying to hold back her tears and you can see the confusion in his eyes. Um, and um, again, you know, it, it works because I'm, I'm letting her tell the story through the expression on her face and his, his face and uh, uh, it's been used a lot. In fact, I subsequently found out that they both managed to escape Sarajevo that day on the, on the bus and um, are now both living in uh, Perth in Australia. When do you stop? You never stop. Why would you stop? You know? Yeah. I don't see the point of stopping, and uh, <laughs> something that slightly irks me is that every new award, every new bursary is for photographers under 30, and, you know, there's all this help given to uh, 
uh, young guys um, because they, it seems like their ideas are better than, than an old guy. And um, I, I really don't see that. And I, I you know, I take um, lessons from people like Elliot Irwitt and uh, who are still shooting well into their 80s um, uh, and, and many others. And why stop when it's, when you enjoy it so much? And uh, it's such an amazing way of, of living. <laughs>